Hey everybody. In today's video, I'm going to be trying out Amazing Clearcast Plus. It's made by Illumilite and I actually use just the regular Amazing Clearcast quite a lot. There's a lot of things that I like about it. There's a few things that I don't and I'm actually going to break that down here before we start to work with the product and try it out. I will say right away that one of the things I don't like about the regular Amazing Clearcast formula is that it does tend to yellow a lot. So adding UV stability to the product is pretty exciting to me. I'm looking forward to making some pieces and putting them out in the sun and seeing how they actually perform. Before I start to work with this though, I do want to talk about Amazing Clearcast in general because I, I use it a lot. The things that I like and the things that I don't like, um, there's more things I like about it than things that I don't. So what I like about this Amazing Clearcast, and I'm looking forward to seeing if these two formulas are similar in these aspects. Like what I like about this, I'm wondering if it will be the same with this and I'll, I'll like that as well. We'll find out. But what I like about the original Amazing Clearcast is that it cures fast. It cures very fast. I would say within about eight hours, your piece is almost fully cured. And if you're making pieces with layers, you can start to build the layers quicker because of how fast it cures. Like that's a big selling point for me. Another thing I like about it is that it's cheap. These this 32 ounce kit I think costs like $23 or something. Another thing I like about it is that it's thick. And if you've watched my other videos, you'll know that I don't tend to go for a thick resin, but sometimes you do want to use one or sometimes I want to use one and it's usually if I'm suspending glitter in the formula or I'm using colorant or anything like that. I usually don't like thick resins because there will be so many bubbles in the finished product if you don't use a vacuum chamber or a pressure pot. Um, but if you're using pigments, it just covers it up. Glitter covers up the bubbles. Pigments cover up the bubbles. It also covers up the yellowing. So when I want a thicker product, um, I tend to go for this stuff. It's also pretty scratch resistant compared to some other resins. My go-to resin, one complaint, uh, Super Sap CCR is what it's called. My one complaint about it is I feel like it scratches easier than a lot of resins. So what I don't like about this product is that the yellowing, like I said, so hopefully that's sorted out, but the smell, it smells terrible. And usually wearing a respirator will completely cover up the smell when you're working with it. If you don't have a respirator and you would like to use one, this is mine. It is a half mask respirator with organic vapor cartridges. And I'll leave information for respirators in the description box area below. But you can work with the product and wear the respirator and it's fine. You don't smell anything. But even just letting the product hang out to cure smells so, so strong. Like I'll put it in the garage or the laundry room or something. And when my husband comes home from work and passes through, hours later, he'll still comment on how he can smell it. So I just, I cannot stand the smell of this product. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be the case with this. We're going to find out. Cool, so with that out of the way, we can get more in depth about the Amazing Clearcast Plus. So I have read the reviews, for the, or some reviews for this stuff, and I've noticed that a lot of people are saying that they don't like it for tumblers. I personally don't make tumblers, but I know a lot of people who work with resin do, so it's just something to keep in mind that people who make tumblers aren't really crazy about this product for whatever reason. All right, so with all that out of the way, we can go ahead and start to break down the product. So I got this online at the Illumilite website and it was $25, um, but I have seen now that they have it in Michaels and Hobby Lobby. The prices are very different though, and I don't know what's up with that. It was $36 for this same size kit, this 16 ounce kit at Michaels, and then it was $20 for the kit at Hobby Lobby. I, I don't know what's up with that, but that's what's going on. Uh, yeah, as I said though, it is a 16 ounce kit. There is eight ounces of the hardener. There's eight ounces of the resin. It is a one to one mix ratio. All of that is stated up here at the top, one to one by volume. Work time, 30 to 40 minutes. I'll see what's up with that because the regular Amazing Clearcast says the same thing, but I don't think I get 30 minutes out of it. I think I probably get like 20 max. It thickens up quick because it cures quickly. Demold time, 24 to 48 hours. So we'll check all that out. So the instructions didn't come with it. I mean, there's a little bit written on the bottle, but it says for complete instructions, visit Illumilite, blah, blah, blah. So that's what I did. I went to the site and I printed out the directions. And I know there's a lot here, so we're only really gonna cover the stuff that is relevant to us. 
Lumilite Amazing Clear Cast Plus is a clear casting and coating system. It cures to a rigid, durable, clear plastic coating. Amazing Clear Cast Plus provides all the same features of Amazing Clear Cast, including a one-to-one -one mix ratio. I appreciate that it says that it cures rigid. Uh, another thing that I really like about Amazing Clear Cast is that it's a very, very hard cure. You can't dent it with your nail at all. And I'm honestly curious about this stuff, if it's going to be as hard of a cure, because I've noticed a lot of the times when UV, like there's a lot of like UV stability in a product, the resin tends to be a little bit softer, not a lot. And to actually, I could show an example of that. Here's some pieces I've been testing out in the sun for the yellowing. Uh, this is Pixis, it's not doing great. This is my go-to Super Sap CCR, and it's been out there since 729. So it's been a few months at this point, but I put KS resin and I put the Super Sap out at the same time and the KS is performing insanely well. I cannot even believe how not yellow this piece still is. It's blowing my mind, frankly. Um, but it's a little bit softer. It, it's a little softer. I can dent it a little easier. Thinner pieces, if they get warmed up, they're more pliable. It's just uh, another product, Amazing Clear Cast, or not Amazing Clear Cast, my bad, uh, Art Resin. Art resin is supposed to be some of the most non-yellowing resin on the market, but it's pliable. Like you can bend it, it stays soft. So I'm wondering if this is gonna be a little bit softer of a product because of the UV enhancers. Uh, I think it might be, and the reason that I say that there's physical properties. Sometimes you can download these sheets and it'll tell you like all kinds of like science-y kind of stuff, but it tells you the hardness like the shore hardness apparently, which is like how easy it can be dented. This is 75 to 77. I checked the hardness of the original Amazing Clear Cast and it is 80. So it's not a very big difference, but this is going to be a little bit softer. I don't know if it's gonna be soft enough for me to really care or for it to matter. It's just, it's gonna be just a tiny bit softer. All right, so this is just kind of giving you the little rundown of the perks of the product. I'm gonna leave the link for all of this in the description area below so I don't waste your time with stuff that's not terribly relevant. All right, so mixing, it's one-to-one -one by volume. Uh, using a mixing container, measure out equal parts per side. All right, varying the mix ratio will alter the cure and change the physical properties in a negative way. Uh, yeah, just measure precisely. Uh, on that note, back when I was allowing comments, some people would kind of give me a hard time about measuring too precisely, which is absurd to me, okay? If you're gonna do this, take the extra few minutes to do it right, measure precisely, mix all the way through. I, I see no point in not doing that. So we're gonna mix for three to five minutes. They want me to keep the stir stick in contact with the bottom of the cup, which reduces air from being introduced into your resin. So I'll be mindful of that. I have a tendency to pull the stick out of the resin and scrape the sides, so I'm gonna make sure to just keep it in there. Okay, this isn't terribly relevant to us, but I think that I, I appreciate that they pointed this out. Uh, it's about working with molds, and they're saying if the surface of your mold has a matte finish, the piece that comes out of it, it's going to be frosted. I've actually had people ask questions about how come my pieces are popping out of the mold shiny and theirs were not. It's because the inside of the mold is shiny. If the inside of your mold isn't shiny, any resin pieces that pop out are not going to be. So work with the shiny mold, you will get a shiny finished piece. Amazing Clear Cast Plus has a work time of 30 to 4 minutes based on a 100 gram sample at 75 degrees. Larger amounts will shorten the time. It's a heat reaction. The hotter the product is, the faster it's going to move. Casting thickness, when used at room temperature, amazing cure class with self-level. Okay, maximum casting thickness is three-eighths of an inch. Additional layers can be poured as soon as four to six hours and up to 12 hours. I don't know if it's gonna be four to six hours. Like I was saying, the original Amazing Clear Cast sets up pretty quickly. I'd say within like an hour, I could pour a second layer. So I don't know, we'll see what happens with this. Okay, color stability yellowing. I thought that this was interesting. 
Okay, as with all epoxy chemistry, ACC plus will develop a yellow hue over time. While there are enhanced UV inhibitors in the system that will help it resist longer than any other competitive products we've tested. It's a pretty bold statement. They're saying that they that it yellowed less than any of the other things they tested. I'm personally curious about what they have tested. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm just interested in all that. Uh, the last time a product said that it had some of the best UV inhibitors on the market, it was this KS resin, and I'm still like, wow. So I don't know. I, I look forward to finding out. Okay, the hue may develop in months in direct UV exposure environments to years indoors. Okay, yeah, it, it's going to yellow, but it's going to yellow less than other products is what it's saying. I think that that's the most relevant to us. If you would like to go and check more of that out, I'll leave the link for this product information in the description area below. So now that we have all of that sorted, I am going to get my product ready to be measured and mixed. I'm going to put on these caps. I tend to put these caps on all of my resin bottles. I order these from eBay. I'll leave the link for these in the description below. They just make measuring so much easier. So yeah, I'm going to take off the little, little foil thing in here. I'm going to put the caps on. I have my cup all marked, and if you have any questions about this super basic stuff, uh, I have a couple of videos that are tips and tricks for beginners and like the super ultra beginners tutorial. So go ahead and go check that out if I end up doing something in the next few minutes that you don't understand. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to get my gloves on. I Like I said, I have a respirator. I'm not going to be using it right now because I need to be able to communicate with you. And I want to actually see what this smells like because I really, really hope that it doesn't smell as strong as the other stuff. But we're going to find out. So I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, I've put my little squeeze top lids on top of my bottles and my cup is marked off and ready to go. It's a one to one ratio. So I'm gonna do 12.5 milliliters of resin and I'm gonna do 12.5 of the hardener. And then I'm gonna stir it with this stir stick right here. It's just a plastic stirrer. Uh, I prefer to use this smaller side. You can use the bigger side. You could use popsicle stick or a craft stick. You could do whatever you want. This is just what I'm personally am gonna do. After the product is mixed, we're going to pour it into this disc mold and then I'm going to pour some into these bezels to test the yellowing. These pieces are going to go out into the sun. And then what I'm actually going to do with this product is I'm going to put it head to head with my go-to resin. This is Super Sap CCR. It has excellent yellow resistant properties and it's actually a pretty hard cure for being as yellow resistant as it is. So I'm going to compare it to that and this is just the OG amazing clear cast. This is just the the original product, so I'm going to put all of these head to head and see how that plays out. And then how it usually works is in a future video, I give an update and I connect the videos and you can go and actually see what this looks like after being in the sun. So I'm going to start with my side A. It's actually pretty thin. I haven't heated it up. You can usually heat up resin in warm water to uh, make it a little bit thinner and easier to work with and there will be fewer bubbles in the finished product. But I don't like to heat up a product unless directions specifically tell me so. So I didn't do it this time. But it's pretty thin. It's thinner than the original Amazing Clear Cast. So there's probably going to be fewer bubbles in the finished product. But I don't know. That's just speculation. Okay, that is all measured out. So now we're gonna move on to the side B. Well, the side B is actually kind of thick. I think it's thicker than the resin, which is kind of unheard of. The hardener is usually much thinner. So that's really interesting. So that is measured as precisely as I can get it. So now we're going to go ahead and start to stir. And like the direction said, uh, for three to five minutes until it's all incorporated. And then when it's all completely mixed in, we want to do it for a couple of minutes after. So I'm going to go ahead and get that started. And they wanted me to not take the stick out of the resin to keep it in in contact with the bottom of the cup the whole time. So that's what we're going to do, which is going to be hard because I like to scrape off the stick and 
take it out of the resin. I, I tend to be a little bit uh, devil may care about it because I have a vacuum chamber. So anytime bubbles do get in it, I just take them all out. So yeah, I'm gonna make sure to stir slowly and maintain contact with the bottom. So there is an odor, but it's not nearly as bad as the original Amazing Clear Cast formula. So that's really cool. Um, I'll make sure to keep tabs on it and see how it is as the hours go by. But so far, so good. It's There's a minor scent, but it's not bad. Under normal circumstances, I speed up the stirring process in the video. I think I'm just going to talk this time and you could just fast forward through it if you would like. Uh, I do apologize, I haven't made a video in a while. If you're one of my subscribers and it actually matters to you, I am sorry. I just, there hit a point when I was just anxious and depressed and feeling all of these things that so many of us are these days. You know, it's hard being human right now. It genuinely is. And uh, I think I was just really responding to that. And like on that note, that's a big reason that I turned off my comments was I had them off for a long time to begin with. Um, I have social anxiety, I have PTSD, I have all kinds of stuff. And I didn't allow comments forever. And then I finally did. And most of the time it was really nice. You know, I've met some amazing people and had some great conversations, but there's just some people Man, who insist on being rude? Who insist on, like, I don't know. I don't understand the reasoning behind a lot of it. And like I said earlier in the video, over ridiculous things. It's like, you do something wrong, I understand. But the fact that people were commenting about me being too precise, it's like, what do I need to do to make you happy? And then I realize I don't need to make them happy. Um, and I also don't need to, to put up with it right now. So I turn the comments off. I don't know if I'm going to turn them back on. I am on Instagram and uh, if you have any questions, you can also email me. All of this stuff is in the description area of this video. Um, I love talking to my viewers and my subscribers. I really do, but I just, I just can't right now. I just can't with the negative comments and I think that people online tend to be punching bags, you know what I mean? Like people who are commenting don't really see us as real people sometimes, but yeah, we're real people. We're real people reading these comments and processing these emotions and it's just hard right now. It's hard all the time, but um, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what I had to say about that. Uh, thank you for listening. I hope you all are doing okay as well. I just... It's all so weird, you know what I mean? And a lot of the time, like, I don't have children. I can't even imagine what parents are going through right now trying to homeschool their children and if they're back to work and, all, like, it's just, it's all so much to process. And then I'm freaked out for people who have lost their homes and were living paycheck to paycheck to begin with and are just in in a bad place. It's just, it's all such a bummer. And I did not mean to bring any of you down with all of this and I will stop now. But, um, I would like to say, I appreciate you watching. And if you subscribed, I appreciate that as well. I have like 17,000 subscribers right now. That's a lot. That's a ton. And I genuinely appreciate that you're spending your time listening to me yammer on. So, so far so good with the resin, getting back to what this video was about. Um, it's incorporating pretty well. The bubble situation is okay. I have not taken the stick out yet. I want to so bad, but I won't. So now I'll go ahead and fast forward through the rest of the stirring. The odor is becoming a little bit more prominent, but it's still not as bad as the original Amazing Clear Cast formula. It's a pretty thick formula, by no means the thickest though, and it is thinner than the original Amazing Clear Cast. All right, so it's at the point that it's fully incorporated. I'm going to go ahead and mix an extra couple of minutes, like the direction said, off camera, and then I'll be back when it's time to pour our product into the mold. The resin is all mixed up. It looks pretty good. There's some bubbles in there. It's not terrible, especially since the resin hasn't been warmed, but there are definitely some in there. It's just to be expected with a thicker product. So I'm going to pour a thin piece here. 
and then just finish the rest over here. Overall, it's been a pleasant experience working with it. It's not overly thick, which I appreciate. The smell isn't terrible. All right, so now I'm going to leave these. I'm going to come back in a while and just sweep a torch or a lighter across the top. And then we're going to leave them. I'll come back, check on them tomorrow, see how much they've hardened. And I'll keep tabs on them to see how it's going over the next couple of hours. And then I'm also going to mix up another batch to test the pot life and see how all that plays out. So I will check back in with you tomorrow and we can touch base about everything that's played out. So I'll see you soon, bye. Okay, I'm back and it's not the next day. It's actually been about three days. And the reason is that this formula cured a bit slower than I thought it would. At the first day, at about 24 hours, I checked it and it was still very dentable. It wasn't tacky, but you could dent it super easy so i waited another 24 hours and then i checked it again and at that point it was much more hardened up i could still dent it a little bit with my nail though and i kind of figured that maybe that's just the way the formula was going to be but i decided to wait another day just to make absolute sure that i gave this formula time to cure so i i would say that it's fully cured at this point this i did the pot life test with. I mixed up 20 milliliters of resin and I got about 55 minutes out of it. If you're mixing higher amounts, it'll heat up quicker and you won't get that much time. But for that amount, I got almost an hour. And at that 55 minute point, I was still able to pour glitter into the resin, mix it up and get it into the mold. Okay. So that's what's going on with this. And I think I'll go ahead and pop this out of the mold right away before these ones. So you remember the directions telling us that if your mold is frosted on the inside or matte on the inside, your piece is going to be frosted. That is what that looks like. Um, these are not going to be frosted like this because the mold is shiny. You can look in there and see that it has a shine. So that's what this is looking like. And now we can go ahead and move on to these and get these popped out. I'm pretty excited. I've been checking it out. It doesn't look like there's very many bubbles in there, but I don't know. So we're going to go ahead and use a black background and see what's going on. So I'll start with the thinnest piece. Yeah, the cure's pretty good. You can dent it just a little tiny bit with your nail. Well, not even really. Yeah, no, you can. Just a little tiny bit. It's not bad. There are so few bubbles in there. I'm really, really surprised at how well that degassed. I was not expecting this product to do that. So let's move on to a thicker piece. So that's what that looks like. Again, not very many bubbles, as especially since we didn't heat up the product. That's pretty remarkable. All right, so now let's do the last piece. So that's the thickest one. There are not that many bubbles in there. That's really, really impressive. Okay, so final thoughts. Would I use this product again? I absolutely would use this product again for a few reasons. It's low odor. It's not terribly expensive. If you get the $25 kit, I don't know why Michaels costs more. Um, I don't know. You can also get this on Amazon. I'll leave the links for all of this. When I was editing, I realized that I left something out that I wanted to cover. When we went over casting thickness in the instructions, it talked about how additional layers can be poured as soon as four to six hours. I would say that I would be more comfortable waiting six to eight hours, at least for the amount that I poured and the room temperature and all of that. It took a while for it to get thick enough, in my opinion, to add another layer. Um, I wouldn't go with the four hours. I would go with six to eight. If that's relevant to you, cool. If that's not relevant to you, cool. One thing I did not like about it is it does take a while to cure. Sometimes products just do. Um, I'll continue to use the original Amazing Clear Cast, but I think I would definitely incorporate this into the products that I use. I think the big thing for me is going to be how well it does perform with the yellowing. As I previously said, I'm going to compare it to Amazing Clear Cast, the original formula, Super Sap. 
and just see how that goes and I'll give an update um, in a couple of months. I guess that covers everything I wanted to cover and then some. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me or hit me up on Instagram and I will do the best I can to answer these for you. So I thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.